Hello and welcome into this week's Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you once again for joining me today. If this is your first time catching a Racing News Now video, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss a thing going forward from RNN. And first off, I want to apologize. This is going out a lot later than it probably should be. This has not been a great weekend. Um, that's been very conducive to doing r and stuff, but we're getting out for you nonetheless, even if it is a tad late. Pole position will be tonight at its normal time, though, 8 p.m. Eastern. So on this Cup Rewind, we're looking back at Sunday's 59th annual Food City 500. 500 laps, 266 and a half miles around the half mile Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. 11 caution flags in this race for a total of 77 laps. This race had it all for you. If you're somebody that likes a lot of wrecks and a lot of a lot of carnage, this was the race for you. If, you. if you're somebody that just likes good short track racing, this was the race for you. This was a pretty good race. First caution came very early, lap number two. Big multi-car incident on the front stretch between Eric Almarola, Ricky Stenhouse, Kyle Busch, William Byron, and Ryan Priest all getting pieces of this wreck. This would be the end of the day for Eric Almarola. He was out very early in that Shazam Ford. Um, Kyle Busch got a piece of this as well after starting near the rear. Um, he would fight back from this, though. Would he get the win? We'll have to find out, but he would fight back from this. This would not be the day, the end of the day for Kyle Busch. Next caution came at lap number 39 as Chase Elliott, Corey LaJoy, and Ryan Priest. Um, all got together on the front stretch as well. Uh, Priest kind of went spinning, and then Chase, getting hard on the brakes trying to avoid, gets tagged in the rear by Corey LaJoy. Lap 119, the 8 of Hembrick and the 15 of Ross Jastain got together in turn 1. Stage 1 concluded, lap uh, 125. Ty Dillon would be your stage 1 winner off some pit strategy. Lap 214, Chase Elliott and Matt Tift got together on the front stretch. Lap 250, or 250, Stage 2 concluded, and Joey Logano would be your Stage 2 winner. Lap 271, the 19 of Truex and the 43 of Bubba Wallace got together on the front stretch. A lot's happening on the front stretch in this race. Uh, we don't usually see a lot of accidents outside of turns, but uh, there's a lot happening on the front stretch in this race. Lap 376, debris in turn two. Lap 416, the 42 of Larson spins in turn two. The next to last caution of the day was lap 433 as Clint Boyer found the wall in turn two after cutting a right front tire. And lap 479, Kyle Larson once again found the wall in turn number three. 21 lead changes in this race among nine drivers. Ryan Blaney led the most laps, 158. Very close behind, though, was his teammate Joey Logano with 146. 71 laps led by Kyle Busch. 40 laps went to Brad Keselowski. 38 led by Chase Elliott. 24 laps went to Clint Boyer. 10 laps led by Eric Jones. 7 laps went to Denny Hamlin. And 6 laps led by Ty Dillon. All right, so let's get into the results. We mentioned that Kyle Busch would rebound from that lap two incident involving Eric Almarola. Would he come back to win, though? Yes, he did. Win number 54 for Kyle Busch in the Cup Series. Um, had a good battle at the end off a of pit strategy with his brother, Kurt. They both stayed out on that late caution, that Larson incident on lap 479. There was only about 15 laps left, and there were I believe it was five cars that stayed out in that caution. Uh, so the cars with tires, Joey Logano being the one that got the highest there in third, um, did not have time to track down Kyle and Kurt. They had a really good battle for the win. Unfortunately, Kurt tagged the wall just a bit with about three laps to go, and that put him just a bit too far behind to really do anything with Kyle. But he was reeling Kyle in before that, and it would have been a really good battle for the win had that not happened. Kurt even said in the post-race interview that um, he was willing to wreck Kyle for that win. He said, if if I was close enough, he goes, I would have just driven it off into three and not even hit the brakes, just seen what happened. So we could have gotten a very exciting finish between the Bush brothers um, if uh, Kurt hadn't tagged the wall there with about three to go. 
Joey Logano, as we said, came home in the third position. Ryan Blaney, fourth, and Denny Hamlin rounds out the top five. Rest of your top ten, a good run for Paul Menard. He was one of those cars that stayed out on that last caution. Was able to salvage a sixth place finish. Seventh was Clint Boyer, Daniel Suarez, eighth. Ryan Newman with a strong run in the top ten and ninth. And Jimmy Johnson, another top ten finish in tenth. 11th through 20th, Chase Elliott there in 11th. Started from the pole, uh, was never much of a factor on the day. He finished 10th in the first stage, but otherwise really wasn't a huge factor in this race. Matt DiBenedetto was strong all day. Had, I think, a top 10 car, unfortunately slipped back to 12th there in the latter stages. Kevin Harvick fought from the back all day long. Uh, He started off the race behind the eight ball a few laps down. Finally got all of those laps back there very late in the race and was only able to rebound to a 13th place finish, even though he did have a very fast car. William Byron came home in 16th. First car one lap down in 17th was Martin Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski in 18th. Kyle Larson, even after all of his troubles on the day, only one lap down in the 19th position, and Bubba Wallace came home in 20th. 21st through 30th, shout out to Chris Buescher in 22nd. Not indicative of the day he had. He had a very fast top 10 capable car, maybe even top 5. Then had some troubles late and came home two laps down in the 22nd position. Alex Bowman there in 23rd. Eric Jones 24th. Daniel Hemrick back 10 laps down after some issues. He came home in the 30th position. 31st through 37th, Ricky Stenhouse. 105 laps down at the end of the race after all of his troubles on the day. 33rd for Ricky Stenhouse. And then Eric Almirola out after only three laps in this race. Came home in the 37th position. All right, that's your results from the Food City 500. So let's head over to the Media Center. And for the third time this season, just in the Cup Series, we'll see what Kyle and his team had to say after this win. Oh, I just admire Adam and the team and Kyle because, as everybody knows, we had to overcome a lot today. And uh, I think uh, Adam can kind of talk about the car at the end. But I, I that early spin, you kind of look at that and say, oh, my gosh, you know, our day's going to end early. But um, I, I think with Adam and Kyle, they have a way of fighting through adversity, doing a great job. Adam made a lot of – and he told Kyle right off the bat, hey, the car's not really hurt. You know, um, and I'm not, I think it probably took something away from the car, but uh, they just did a great job fighting all day. I think obviously the, the caution at the end there really helped us. And I think, you know, we were a short run type car at the end. Uh, it just shows you how hard Bristol is. We had so many things happen to our cars today. Uh, we had loose wheels with Martin. We had loose wheels uh, with Eric. Denny just, you know, got, uh, obviously we speeding on pit road. A lot can happen at this racetrack. It's very hard to win here. And so it's a thrill for us. For Coy, uh, we had our whole family here. We had, uh, well, I say our whole family. We had Jackson and Miller, two grandsons here. And uh, Coy, obviously, for our family, uh, everybody's excited. And obviously, for Mars, it's a huge deal for Skittles. It's a huge deal for Norm at Interstate, and obviously for uh, Toyota, it's a big deal for us. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> we have uh, been pretty, uh, what's the word here, uh, close all year. Um, I, this was probably about the worst car I gave them to go race with this year. Um, this new tire combination and aero package just threw off our old setup, and, and we didn't make a lot of headway in practice. and. We weren't as good as we hoped to be, but, uh, you know, we got some good tracks coming up, and uh, hopefully we can get back on our horse and uh, give him something he can race with a little closer next week. Uh, well, it's um, – I'll say it again. I've said it a few times, but it's pretty cool to continue to just have the opportunity to go out there and, and win these races, and when you win these races, the numbers will just continue to add up, and um, the addition of that and getting to Lee Petty, I mean, um, you're, you're, gonna, you're starting to get into some – some really heavy company that's at the top 10 of the, the all-time wins list of our series and of our sport. Um, you know, I feel as though I've, I've just done my fair share and have been with some amazing people over the years that have gotten me to, uh, to this number thus far, and uh, we'll just keep, keep going. All right, so let's take a look at your point standings in the playoff grid following this race before wrapping up here today. A little bit of moving around here, otherwise uh, pretty status quo 
Daniel Suarez has jumped all the way up to 12th. Um, I think that's the biggest notable move inside the uh, top 16. Newman has moved into the top 16 now in 15th. Ricky Stenhouse, his teammate, all the way down to 16th now after a not-so-great race. Eric Jones out right now in 17th. And then uh, Austin Dillon, Paul Menard, William Byron all out here just very close to that cutoff line. Um, good battle back here shaping up right now from 15th back to about uh, 20th. Only separated by, what are we looking at here, F uh, 5 points, 15th to 19th. And then add in another 9 back to William Byron. So um, it's it's pretty tight battle back here right at the cutoff line. I mean, I know we're only 8 races into the season, but uh, we're getting a pretty good battle back here shaping up here for the guys that uh, probably are going to be fighting to get in on points this season. But that is a quick look at your playoff grid following the Food City 500, and I believe that'll do it for us today on the Cup Rewind. Again, want to apologize for this getting out so late. Uh, we're going to try not to make a habit of this going forward, but uh, we uh, do have pole position coming up at the normal time tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, to recap you on everything that happened this weekend, not just in the world of NASCAR, but in motorsports as a whole. And then uh, Diecast Review coming up as usual on Wednesday. Then we're back at the track live this weekend at Salem for ARCA's third race of the season, the Kentucky Anna Ford Dealers 200. So uh, look for a lot of coverage coming up this weekend, both on Saturday and Sunday, as it is a two-day show, practice and qualifying on Saturday, the race on Sunday. So have lots going up there. And then something special coming up probably next week. We're in the editing phases right now. We do have it filmed in the editing phases, so uh, probably going to premiere next week. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that, though, but uh, when, uh, when we're ready to announce it, we will announce it, and it is going to be something cool you will want to see. So keep an eye out for that, uh, but uh, that's about it. So uh, if you haven't done it already, you need to go down below, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of that going forward on RNN. Like I said, we got some cool stuff coming up. Um, there is the one thing in the immediate future here probably next week, but we do have some other stuff in the planning phases coming up as well. Um, and while you're down there hitting that subscribe button, why don't you hit that big thumbs up button if you like the video. It's much appreciated when you do that. But at that, this has been the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.